lot of astrologers does not even know the name of Anu Janma Nakshatra. So what is the Anu Janma Nakshatra? Even if you will go to any astrologer, uh, go to nearby any astrologer and ask them, sir, what is my Anu Janma Nakshatra? Can you please tell me? I'm giving you guarantee on this. 99% astrologers won't be able to tell you what is the meaning of Anu Janma Nakshatra. They will say Anuradha Nakshatra is there, but there is no Anu Janma Nakshatra. So Anu Janma Nakshatra is basically the Nakshatra of your Lagna, the Nakshatra of your Ascendant. That's the, that's the Sanskrit name of the Lagnas, Nakshatra. And from that, this, you can derive that, that the astrologers are not, they are not scholar. They are not very sound enough. They have not studied properly. They don't even know the name of Nakshatra. Namaste and a warm good morning to all the viewers that have joined us today. Sangam Talks welcomes you. Today we will be unveiling uh, several astrology related myths uh, and answer questions on Nadi Dosh, Manglik Dosh, Gun Milan, Love Marriage, uncovering astrology's true essence by debunking several myths that are in relation to it and providing a deeper understanding of this field. For the same purpose, we have our speaker today, Pratul Visheraji, who is an accomplished Vedic astrologer and mythologist and TEDx speaker, holds the record as the youngest TEDx speaker in 2018 with expertise in multiple astrological traditions, including Dev, Prayag, Bihar and Kerala. He amazes audiences with his precise predictions and scientific approach, winning over skeptics and reinforcing the significance of astrology. I welcome you, sir, and I request you to take over from here. Today, I will be talking about basically, uh, which is a very hot topic in today's era, which is like the Kundli Milan. And I think it has to be uh, discussed uh, within the astrology community. And, you know, people must be aware about it because it has a lot of, lot of misconception about this. Okay, and uh, so I will be revealing, you know, the like astonishing facts today and which will definitely break your all the understanding about the Gun Milan, Kundli Milan, because I think uh, the only time we always go to astrologer is basically even if you don't believe in astrology, because in India, even if you don't believe in astrology, at least you go to an astrologer at least for once in your life. And that is when you are going to get married. So that is very important, I think, for everyone the people who don't believe in it and people also who believe in it very firmly. So like, as I said, the myths of the Kundli Milan. Okay, so we will be talking about the myths of the Kundli Milan. Uh, let's go there. So as most of the people who are in over this webinar, uh, they must be from North India. And uh, even if they are not from the North India, they must have heard about the Gold Milan, Ashtkut Milan system. And you must be hearing your uncle and the aunties, oh, get the Gold Mil rahe they like this. So this is the uh, this is the same system which you have heard in you know you know in your family. Out of thirty six, how many points you are getting in terms of compatibility? So if we talk about the compatibility, here it is. Gold Milan is done on your Moon Nakshatra. So whenever you get born, you got a moon nakshatra okay and on the basis of your moon nakshatra you get your gun milan score which is a 36 point system now it's neat to understand that that moon changes its nakshatra in 24 hour approx so what i'm trying to say here is that this gun gun milan system is completely vague system it's not at all reliable to do the matchmaking so just suppose you get a person, um, what I'm trying to say is, just suppose you get a person, you you are in a relationship with your partner, okay? Just suppose it's her, his name is Rahul, okay? And he is born on 21st January, 1995. So whatever the points you are getting out of 36, you will get the same number of points with every guy on this earth who has born on 21st January 1995. So even if you talk about India, at least 10,000 people will get born on the same particular date. And it doesn't matter if you are born in the morning, if you are born in the evening. You will get the exact 
number of gun milan. If you have scored 20 out of 36, you will get 20 out of 36 with all the boys who has born on that particular day. Why? Because it is completely based on the one single parameter, which is moon nakshatra. The moon nakshatra gets changed in 24 hour approx, approx 24 hours. Okay, I'm not stating the exact time here because sometimes its uh, speed gets changed. So moon changes its nakshatra in 24 hour approx. Can you imagine just in 24 hour time span, any person who will get born, they cannot have a same kind of compatibility with you. It's not <laughs> practically possible. Just suppose if astrology or if this good Milan system is saying that you two people are not compatible with each other, right? Because you are getting 10 out of 36 points. So can you say that the same thing for all the 10, 10,000 boys? Do you really think you are so miserable in your life that you will not get along with another 9,999 boys? This can only happen unless you are a really psychopath or a criminal. So this really, you know, brings up the question, what is the reliability of this system? So this is really questionable. So I uh, definitely researched into it. Okay. I think some chats are there. Okay. Now the another point is, <clears throat> huh. so another point is, this has been mentioned in the classical text of astrology written by Rishi. So is this wrong? Because Gun Milan system, from where it comes? It comes from the classical text. It comes from the classical text of astrology, Shastra, basically. Jo hai amare. Now, if it is if had if it is written there, it has been written by the sages, right? Rishis. So kya wo jhoot bol rahe? Are they lying to us? No. But the point is, there is a very a, you know, different perspective, which I would like to give today, that we always consider Shastra as a complete book. But Shastra are never ever like a complete book. They are like the notebooks of their issues. They have wrote it, not for the general public, they have wrote it just for their students. So just suppose if I am teaching astrology and I'm saying I will not name, I will not name Venus as Venus or Shukra. I will name it as Bhrigu, right? Just suppose I have what if I'm writing not S U N Sun, I'm writing S O N Sun, but this is like an encrypted, like it's an encrypted way. It's not a complete information there. So there are many uh, dashas, there are many concepts which they have only introduced, they have named it. Okay, so Darshan Chakra Dasha. They have just named it in the classical text, but they have not taught it. They have not taught the complete procedure. Yet. So that's why it's a, like a very uh, notebook kind of a thing. Okay, short notes, the classical text, which they have wrote. It's not the complete system. So because of that, many secrets at that time, they used to transfer by the oral tradition. Because if you know about little culture of India, so we never had a written transfer of knowledge, like which you do in the uh, uh, IT companies today, you know, the guys giving KT. So the KT at that time was like a, in an oral form. So when it was an oral form, all the secrets, all the secrets they have never wrote in the classical text. They have always transferred by the oral tradition. That's why we say, if you want to learn astrology, if you want, if you are into this, you need a guru. Why you need a guru? You don't need a guru because you cannot write or you cannot listen. It's because you cannot access the secrecy of classical texts of or any concept without a guru. So the thing is, absolutely not, but people need to understand this is not the complete process of a matchmaking. Lord of Asoda does not even know the name of Anu Janma Nakshatra. So what is the Anu Janma Nakshatra? Even if you will go to any astrologer, uh, 
go to nearby any astrologer and ask them, sir, what is my Anu Janma Nakshatra? Can you please tell me? I'm giving you guarantee on this. 99% astrologers won't be able to tell you what is the meaning of Anu Janma Nakshatra. They will say, Anuradha Nakshatra is there, but there is no Anu Janma Nakshatra. So, Anu Janma Nakshatra is basically the Nakshatra of your Lagna, the Nakshatra of your Ascendant. That's the, that's the Sanskrit name of the Lagnas, the Nakshatra. And from that, this, you can derive that that the astrologers are not, they are not scholar. They are not very sound enough. They have not studied properly. They don't even know the name of nakshatras. What they have just did, they have just picked a 20-30 rupees book on the bus stand, Apna Bhavishya Khud Jane. And they have just learned two and three rules from there. And two, three sentences they have just made and they start predicting it. All the generic stuff. You don't get uh, according to your hard work. No one always, uh, your friends always betray you. No one trusts on you. Uh, everyone cheat on you. Such generic statements are. This is not astrology. So matchmaking should also be done through Anu Jan Nakshatra or even Choose the nakshatra between Anu Janma nakshatra or Janma nakshatra, whoever is stronger. This is also a, another rule which has been mentioned in the classic. That first you decide which nakshatra is more stronger. Janma nakshatra is more stronger. Anu Janma nakshatra is more stronger. And on the basis of that, just consider if Anu Janma nakshatra is more stronger, then consider the Anu Janma nakshatra. And if your girl have the Janma nakshatra is more stronger, then you will match the Anu Janma Nakshatra with the Janma Nakshatra. Not the Janma Nakshatra. Because Anu Janma Nakshatra will get change in approximately 40 minutes. In every 40 minutes, your Anu Janma Nakshatra will get change. So who is more minute? Janma Nakshatra or Anu Janma Nakshatra? Obviously, Anu Janma Nakshatra is more minute. It will give you more, you know, closer results more accurate results. But sometimes it has also been seen that even the matching of Anujan Nakshatra is not giving the results. They are saying, oh, this couple are not compatible with each other, but they are living happily with each other from the last 40 years. Then why? Why the results are not consistent? And the another fact about this Gun Milan is, if you will go here, so I was saying that, but the still Gun Milan system is not satisfactory factor to decide the matching because it is not giving us the consistent results. Because it is only dependent on one parameter, which is Moon in Akshatra. But you will be shocked to know that in South India, there is a no point system. There is a no concept of a Gun Milan in South India. In the Andhra, Karnataka, there is Tamil Nadu, Kerala, there is a no point system of Gun Milan or a 36 point system. So if it is so important, then why it is not uniformly accepted in all over the India? Why not? It is not practiced in every part of the India. This is the major question. If it is so important, if, if it is... If it has been written by sages, then I think it should have the utmost priority. But still, a lot of people are not following it. No one in the South India is following it. So there must be, so we can consider that this is not the supreme factor to decide the matchmaking at least. And even in Tamil Nadu, they have a different little varied system. And in Kerala, they have a little varied system. In Bengal, if you will go, they also have a different matchmaking system. In Gujarat, they have a different matchmaking system. But the major difference between the North Indian matching and South Indian matching is a huge. It's huge. They are completely opposite. Only two and three factors are common. But most of the factors are completely different. 
so they use different parameter also it is dependent upon the moon nakshatra also uh, the south indian matchmaking if we go by that they also use the moon nakshatra but they have a very different parameter okay but they are not using the same parameters like a gan dosha nadi dosha etc in their system they use rajju rajju dosha if you have ever heard about rajju if you have if you have roots from the south india and if you know then you must be very aware about this word rajju dosha they use the veda system or veda chakra basically so you can see that there is no uniformity in the parameters of matchmaking in the different parts of uh, in the different different parts of india not the matching sorry for the typo so there is no standard parameter which can be followed in all over the india so how can we trust on this gun milan system and again also 18 gunana out of 36 is threshold limit for matchmaking it's like the passing marks okay you have got the 50% passing marks out of 36 you are good to go ahead you can marry but again in this threshold it is not uniformly accepted if you will go into the dev prayag you will find that even in lot of tribal and the uh, rural areas for them 12 gunas are enough they say okay if you get 12 more than 12 guna you can go ahead for the marriage so pandit chakradhar doshi who was like a very famous astrologer of his time he also did the match making and he said yes you can go ahead and you can marry if you even have more than 12 points out of 36 so again it is not uniformly accepted and these are some points because of this people start doubting on the credibility of it and they start saying it it is a pseudo science it is a pseudo science but the thing is it is not a pseudo science but the problem is the people who are doing it they have not studied it properly right so out of um, there is another point which comes in the gun milan system which is a nadi dosha so nadi dosha is very i think famous you must have heard i think in your life that that person didn't get married because of this nadi dosha some astrologer told him that your wife will get die or you will get die your children will uh, become paralyzed if you will marry with each other because you have a nadi dosha it's a huge dosha huge dosha huge dosha so we will talk about the nadi dosha also. so what is the gun milan system let's take a look over it so gun milan system is a asht kut milan system asht kut asht means eight kut means parameter and the milan system so these are the eight parameters varna vasya tara yuni grah matri gan kut bhakut or nadi kut so varna system they have allotted one point to the varna kut for the vasya kut they have allotted two points for the tara kut they have allotted three points for the yuni kut they have allotted four points for the grah matri they have allotted five for the gan kut they have allotted six bhakut for seven and Eight for Nadi Kut. So Nadi Kut has the highest number of points in the Asht Kut Milan system. They have the highest number of points in the Asht Kut Milan system. That's why, if you are doing a matchmaking and all the parameters are getting full marks, if you are getting uh, matchmaking with your partner, everything is pretty good. All the seven parameters are perfect. Seven by seven, six by six, five by five, four by four. But still, if there is nadi dosha so how they do the numbering system here either you will get your 8 or either you will get 0 there is nothing in between so it's like a rodi's x either everything or nothing so either you get the 8 points either you get the 0 points here in the nadi kut so if astrologer found oh there is a nadi dosha people uh, these two couple are getting 0 points out of 8 so this is a huge nadi dosha they should not get married so now let's see what is nadi dosha so eight point has been allotted to nadi dosha in ashtkut milan system when the nadi of both partner is the same it is believed to create disharmony potential health issues in the in their future offspring nadi dosha is categorized into three types adi which is related with the vat madhya which is related with the pitt or antya nadi which is related with the kaf so vat pitt kaf basically these are the three main 
uh, ingredients from the Ayurveda. Okay. And on the basis of these three parameters only, only Ayurveda specialists, they basically decide your health. Okay. So remedies such as performing ritual prayers and often suggest to mitigate its effect. While some adhere to disbelief, other view uh, skeptically due to lack of scientific evidences. So a lot of people don't believe on it. A lot of people say, Ki, yes, with the, some remedies, it can be mitigated. So we will study about it more. But in this system, you can score either eight points or none. Classical texts often highlight Nadi Dosha potential for severe outcomes like death of partner or child health, health issues. Although it is majorly believed that it gives an impact on the child's health, not on the partner death or something like that. But in some classical, it has been mentioned. But again, the biggest question is, if it is so crucial, if it is so crucial, according to astrologers, all the astrologers, especially North India, then why it is not observed in South India? Why they are not giving it as an important factor? Why they are not considering it as an important factor? Why it is disregarded there? Why? If it is so important, they don't even consider it. Forget about, they don't even name it in the matchmaking process. Completely avoidance, why it is that? This is my question. This was my question basically when I was studying about it. So definitely there is a huge difference of opinion there in South Indian, North Indian starters. So what should we consider? I think we should consider both, but should not give all the power, all the veto power to Nadi Dosha. Treat it like just an another parameter. So in my view, all these parameters should have only one point. You should not give the highest number of points to the Nadi Kut only. Just treat it as a, another parameter. Okay. If out of eight parameters, if you are getting five to six parameters, good enough. Okay. This is a decent match. You can go ahead and you can look for another parameters, whether they are matching or not. But just don't give all the veto power to the Nadi Kut. This is my personal view. You can definitely differ from it and you are free to follow it or not follow it. If we talk about more Nadi Dosha, another reason Nadi Dosha creates fear is due to some self-proclaimed astrologers being more skilled in performing rituals like Yagna and Havan. They lack deep astrological knowledge and act more as a Purohit. Consulting them is like seeking medical help from a pharmacist instead of a doctor. While they might handle common ailments, intricate health issues are likely beyond their expertise. But we also have a problem. Okay, if you are a normal people, you are you don't have any knowledge of astrology. The biggest mistake we do over in life is we always go to the nearby pandit who sit in our mandir. Okay, like my in my local society mandir or in my local mandir, I will go to him and I'll say, please do the matchmaking for my kid. For myself, you need to understand that that they are purohit. They have expertise in the rituals of performing havana and yagna. They don't have expertise in astrological science. You need to understand this. It's a complete difference, like a doctor and a nurse. They are a good executors, just like doctor prescribe the remedy after doing all the diagnosis. And the nurses are there who execute those medicines, who take care of you, and who made it sure that you are getting proper results of these medicines. So it's very, very important to understand the difference between of an astrologer and a priest. If you will go to priest, definitely you will be misguided by him. Because what the priest does these days, they have a panchang with them. Have you ever gone to any priest? You will find that, that they always carry a one small booklet. Okay. They will always carry one booklet. That is a panchang. They do the matchmaking from the panchang. In the panchang, you already get the one table. Okay. If the girl has bo born in this nakshatra, if the boy has born in this nakshatra, this will be the result out of 36 points. 
you are getting 28 points or getting 20 points on, on the basis of that. Oh, yes, 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 you go ahead and get married. So all the knowledge of the matchmaking of these priests comes from that Panchang booklet only. They have not studied anything further that further than that uh, Panchang booklet. And Panchang is a, not a matchmaking textbook. It's like that you are doing all the mathematics from the just the log table. Do you think all the mathematics reside only in the log table? Panchang is just like a calculator. It helps you to do the calculations. But it doesn't help you to give the knowledge. So the question remains same. So the question remains same. Should we take it seriously or not? If we dismiss it, are the teachings of our cultural sages incorrect? Or if they are right, shouldn't Nadi Dosha effect be consistent? So if Nadi Dosha doesn't work, then there is a one point. Sages are saying completely wrong. They don't know anything, right? But if they are right, then Nadi Dosha result should be consistent. I can show you many number of charts, many number of charts where Nadi Dosha exists, but still the couple has very good health. Their kid has very good health. They have three, four kids and they have no issues even in conceiving, even in delivering a baby and even the health of a baby. Nothing. Also remember one thing that this Nadi Dosha is basically they have divided 27 nakshatra into the three category. So any people who have born on this earth, they will acquire one nakshatra. So if you are going to match your Kundli with any other partner, 33% chances are there that you will have a same Nadi. If, and if you will have a same Nadi, you will have a Nadi Dosha. So just suppose 100 guys are there. They're standing in a line with you. With 33 boys, you will not be able to conceive a kid. Or you will not be able to, con uh, even if you will conceive a kid, the kid will be paralyzed or kid will be special child, something like this. Do you really think? And if you will consider the whole India, then what? Out of 135 crore people, right? Almost, uh, what should we say? 72? 72 crore will be male. And out of 72 crore, of, uh, if you will take the 30% of 72 crore, so what will be like? Approx 21 CR? 21 CR with the 21 CR boys. You will not be able to conceive a kid. Really? This is so absurd. And doesn't make any sense. So, so what should we consider basically? So basically, sages are saying incorrect. No. Sages have said correct. But the information the astrologers has studied or the read, just, you know, again from the Panchang and the roadside book seller, they have just gained their knowledge from there only. It is because of them. You are not aware about the complete, complete story about the Nadi Dosha. Okay. There are many cancellations available about Nadi Dosha, but I'm going to reveal some rare and authentic cancellations. Some common cancellations are already available on thousand website on the Google. So you can go there and find the cancellation of a Nadi Dosha. But I'm going to reveal here that kind of a, a cancellation, which are not mentioned everywhere and even they are so rare that a lot of people doesn't know about it but don't worry i'm not going to share it on my side like i don't cook astrology in my home okay so you know i don't create astrology on my own so i will give you the proper uh references of the classical list so this is a shloka from a viva kautuhal so viva kautuhal is a classical text on a basically um, now, now you can hear this you can read this viva kautuhal so this classical text is basically based on the, the subject of Viva, that marriage, right? It's not the, it's not the Panjang. It's a particular marriage textbook. 
and it has been mentioned there according to this if the bride and the groom has these signs these signs taurus gemini virgo libra sagittarius pisces then nadi dosha doesn't exist that means we have 12 zodiac signs right and out of 12 six of if you have born in these six uh zodiac signs if your rashi is if your moon sign okay we are talking about the moon sign here if your moon sign is in taurus gemini Virgo, Libra, Sagittarius, and the Pisces. And your girl also has, or your, your partner also has any one of these Rashi. Then the whole Nadi Dosha is not applicable upon you. The Nadi Dosha doesn't exist. Can you imagine 50% people are already exempted from the Nadi Dosha? And that's why even after having Nadi Dosha in the matchmaking, people still are getting, uh, uh, they are having no issues with the progeny. They're still able to conceive the kid. This is the main reason. And I'm not saying it from my side. Who the hell I am? I'm nothing in front of 5,000 old, you know, cultural heritage. So you can see here, this is the shloka. This is the textbook from where I have picked it. Now the another classical text, which is Jyotir Nibant, they have also mentioned that if you have born in Artharth, Vishaka, Adra, Shavan, Rohini, Pushya, Bharani, Purbhadra, Magha, if you have born, if you and your partner has born in one of these nakshatras, which is Vishaka, Adra, Shavan, Rohini, Pushya, Bharani, Purbhadra, Magha, if you have born in these nakshatra, then Nadi Dosh is not applicable upon you. I am not saying it. Jyotinibandh is saying it. Again, the sages are saying it. Again, there is another shloka. Okay. So, means if anyone out of couple get born in Rohini, Adra, Mirga, Shira, Pushya, Shravan, Uttar, Bhadra, Revati, Hasta, then their Nadi Dosha get cancelled. So, in another text, they have also mentioned another set of nakshatras, even if you both, even out of even one, anyone, anyone out of couple get born, even in these nakshatra, Nadi Dosha is not applicable upon you. Okay. So there are other misconceptions which is very prevalent that Nadi Dosha exists only in Brahman, not in Kshatriya, Vaishya, or Shudra. This is also there. Because if you will go to some astrologer, they will say, Nadi Dosha only exists for Brahman. You are a Mishra. Or sorry, you are a Singh. And you know, she is a Chauhan. You both are Kshatriya. This is not applicable for you. This is the biggest bullshit statement any astrologer can give. Now, I will tell you from where it is coming. Because in one classical text, it has been mentioned. Nadi dosh keval brahman var kanya hitu. Kshatriyo me varna dosh. Vashudro ke liye yoni dosh visheshtya. Vicharani yoh hote hai. Okay. This has been written in very different context. Which you need to understand that. Okay. Let me uh, just hide that part and explain to you. Tell me one thing. Who is brahman? Brahman is a person who deals with the knowledge. Right? And for the Brahman, knowledge becomes the most important. The main objective of his life is knowledge. To trans to gain the knowledge, to use that knowledge, and then transfer that knowledge. So if Brahman is not transferring the knowledge, then it means it is killing the knowledge. And as you guys know, in our ancient India, Knowledge used to get transferred by the oral traditions, not by the written form. So for the oral tradition, there should be someone who can receive knowledge, right? It's not like I have read, wrote the book, I have published it from this and this press. Someday someone will study it. So for to listen, to receive, so that anyone can receive it. So that's why it has been said that Brahman should have a kid. Because Nadi Dosha is related with the progeny. If Brahman will not have a kid, then to whom they will impart their knowledge? Now you can obviously say, they can also hire students. Like also students come to any Brahman to gain the knowledge. They can impart their knowledge to their students. So what's the issue in that? The issue is this. That 
Brahman is also not allowed to do the multiple marriages. Okay, they are not allowed to do the multiple marriages. So that's why Kshatriya Nadi Dosha uh, is not applicable. Why is, uh, it is not applicable in Kshatriya? Because Kshatriya is allowed to do the multiple marriages, but Brahman is not allowed to do the multiple marriages. So just suppose if I'm a king, I have a queen, I'm not able to create any kid with my queen, I can marry another queen also. I can bring another queen in my kingdom. I can marry four girls. And that's why Kshatriya was allowed to do that. Why Raja Dasha had three wives? Because he was not able to have a kid. He tried with the first wife. He didn't get it. He tried with the second wife. Then he woke up. That's why the kings used to have the different wives. But Brahman can't do it. So for him, it's really important to impart the knowledge. Because if your kid will stay with you, he will learn the, all the small intricacies about your knowledge. And for the Vaishya, Gan Dosh is important. What is a Gan Dosh? Gan Dosh basically, if you have born in a uh, Rakshas Gan, if you are born in a Manushya Gan, or if you are born in a Devta Gan. So according to Rishis, it, it is like if you are born in a Devta Gan, you are like a Devta. Although it is not very true. Okay. <laughs> a lot of good sannyasi and a lot of, uh, you know, really good. Uh, people they have born in a born in a rakshas gana so it's not like that but according to opine of it so for the vaishya gana dosh is important why because just suppose your wife is rakshas gana you are a devta gana you are doing the vaishya you are like doing the business okay so not revealing the secret of the business is the main purpose of the couple what is the main purpose of the coca cola right now it is like they don't want to reveal their formula of a Coke. And for a Kshatriya, Varnakut is more important. What is a Varnakut? Varnakut is basically either you are Kshatriya, either you are Brahman, either you are Shudra, either you are Vaishya. This is more important for a Kshatriya. Because class is more important for kings. I would like to have a relationship with a queen of some kingdom or princess of some kingdom rather than just any roadside girl if I am a king. So according to that context, this shloka was written. But tell me, if you are if you are born in a Brahmin family, and if you are doing a job in an IT company, you are a Shudra or you are a Brahmin. If you are giving a services, you are a Shudra. If you are a teacher, you are a Brahmin. If I am doing a business, I am a Vaishya. But doesn't matter what I am even on the basis of my classification of a work. But don't you think that we all people in today's era, we need everything in our life. We also want to have kids. We also want to have a good marital life. We also want to have a good career. We need everything like. And same sages have mentioned that they have said the rules get changed according to Time and era. Desh Kal Paristhiti. You should always remember Desh Kal Paristhiti. So rules should be get changed according to era. So do you really think that this Nadi Dosha will be applicable in this era? No. If I have to impart the knowledge, I can make a webinar and I can impart the knowledge. I didn't need any kid to give my oral tradition knowledge transfer. So this is the main problem. That these people have not studied, they have not understand the context of the shloka in which era it was written and for which era it was written. They have also mentioned that every woman is like a goddess. You should also worship goddess. So do you think every woman is like a goddess? No, every woman is not like a goddess. So context, what they're trying to say, try to read between the lines. Not any scholar has done this. If they have ever studied all the classical texts, if they have studied it properly, 
then there would be any misconception regarding Nadi Dosh and all of this. That's why South Indian astrologers are more knowledgeable in terms of studies. They have studied properly. And if you will go into something, that's why they don't consider Nadi Dosh. They also have their different parameters to check whether the kid or whether the couple can have progeny or not. And why the progeny is more important? Why progeny is why everyone is focusing whether the kid will get born or not, whether the kid will have a good health or not? Because the purpose of marriage is not having a honeymoon in Maldives. The purpose of marriage is to give the procreation, to do the procreation. Because if you will not procreate, your ancestors will not get born again in your family. Your ancestors will not get chance to stay in heaven and you will pitra rin. This is the pitra rin. The depths of ancestor. That's why you marriage is there. No? That's why the marriage is the biggest milestone in anyone like. That's why you spend crores and lakhs in marriage. But just suppose, okay, it's fine. You are the smallest kid or you're the youngest kid of your family and you're having a Nadi Dosha. Just suppose even in 1% case, you are having a Nadi Dosha with your girlfriend. Okay. And if you both don't want to have a kid, then again, it is fine. Don't have a kid. If the couple doesn't want to have a kid, then what then Dosha, this Dosha can do? Nothing. Just suppose. But again, even if you want to have a kid, then there are still remedies for that. Swan dan or Annadanam Mahadanam. Annadan is the greatest dan. It's not like once in the in the uh, once in the life you have to do the Annadan. You have to do the Annadan on a very regular basis. Then these dosha can nullify it. That's why you say no, your karma can change the destiny. But it's not like the one uh, you will do the karma for once and your destiny will get changed. It's a destiny. It's not a metro station. Another thing is, a lot of astrologers do is uh, do that. That they do the matchmaking, uh, especially in North India, by the name. Recently, yesterday, uh, a case came to me and they were saying, astrologer has suggested us that you change your name on the wedding card and then you can marry this girl because then your, uh, your then your good Milan, Ashtakut Milan points will get changed. If the guy is Himanshu, put his name as Yogesh and then you marry uh, with this guy, then your marriage will be successful. Oh, wow. So I will also change my name as a Lakshmi Pati. From the next day, I will become millionaire. So it's not like that. That if you will change your name, your planets get changed. Because it has been mentioned in the classic. Then you should not match uh, by the name. If you have the detail of your Janma Nakshatra, if you even know your date of birth, you doesn't know the uh, time, then you can also know, uh, know the your Janma Nakshatra because 24 hours it will be same. Even if you just know the approx time. And if you know the Janma Nakshatra, the, the matchmaking should be on the basis of Janma Nakshatra only. Not, it should not be on the basis of name Nakshatra. Okay, you have born it. Uh, okay, your name is Aman. Okay, your, you have uh, you got a Kritika Nakshatra. It's not like that. Just suppose the guy's name is Aman and he's marrying a girl with Shreya. This girl will get the Satvisha Nakshatra. The boy will be having a Kritika Nakshatra. So it means every even if they are compatible, just suppose if they are compatible. So what they will say? So every guy with the A uh, initials will get compatible with the S initials girl. That's the logic, no? 
because they always take the initials they doesn't care about what is your name shrimati pallakala what is the first initial of your name if it is s you fall in a aquarius tadvisha nakshatra if your name is aman you born fall in a aries kritika nakshatra so in that case a guy with the a name should be compatible with the every girl who has name started with s but do you think that it can be possible obviously it cannot be possible because they have also mentioned that while doing the match making even with the name when you don't know the janma nakshatra of the, of couple you should make a prashna at that time and you should make a prashna at every match making to just get a another prashna is basically a, another parameter to check whether this union can happen or not whether it will be fruitful or not but no one knows the prashna so basically whatever you are noticing in the society regarding these terms ashtkut milan gun dosh itne gun mile utne gun mile nadi dosh it's all about it's all because of the lack of understanding of actual classical text they have not studied it and why they will study because before uh, colonial era raja used to hire astrologers so you must have heard the word raj jyotish he was a raj jyotish at that time right so astrologer was a very prestige a uh, prestigious position at that time only kings can afford astrologers because you have to provide the observatory if you will go to uh, jaipur you will find that uh, uh, jantar mantra right the jantar mantra we also have in our delhi in our varanasi we also have so what they are they are observatory they are observatory of astrologers they are not astrology oh, observatory just to find oh just look how cute the pole star looks you know oh my god how beautiful saturn rings are they are the observatory of astrologers because astrologers were the scientists of that time so their their salaries were very high and after the colonial era within a 150 years the knowledge has been destroyed completely no one is going for the astrologer no no king is there to sponsor any astrologer there so they have to sort for another skill so they have to sort for havan they have to sort for uh, selling gemstone they have to sort for you know inducing fear in the people oh you have this in this dosha you have a uh, falana dosha you have a dilana dosha and you get your havan until unless you will not get your havan you you will stay in the same problem because they have to run their house right there is no one is uh, no kingdom is there no king is there to sponsor them and that's how because of these political or geopolitical situations their focus shifted from learning astrology to earning money and that's why we still have no college all like banaras is hindu university actually gives a course on astrology but except one or two colleges there is no other college even who recognize it as a subject because no one has given importance after the colonial period on it there were only few people who were doing it on private basis like pandit chakra dhar joshi so because of this astrologers have not studied it properly because they don't get the return from it these days still people want to do the 50 lakh of marriage but still they want to do the match making in 51 rupees and i'm not telling about like even my own relative she has given 51 rupees for her own daughter marriage for the match making for the mahurat also 51 rupees only for the 50 lakh of wedding trust me the mehndi you know the guy who comes for the mehndi he also takes more than any astrologer so because of these uh, unawareness this is happening in the society so that's all from my side for today if you have any question you can ask
Kaushik is asking, does this imply that P the puja doesn't actually affect? Just wanted to know your view. People say that Nari Dosha affect only when anyone has Brahman word. Is it correct? Brahman word, look, this is really absurd to... On which basis you will uh, calculate you have uh, born as a Brahman or not? By your birth or by your work? If you are a teacher, professor, then you are a Brahmin. If you are not a teacher, professor or a doctor, because doctor also deals with the knowledge, you are not a Brahmin. Just because you have a name as a Mishra or something, you are not a Brahmin. The Vern system is on the basis of the classification of work you do. It's not on your birth. And even it is on your classification of work, it is not applicable. Okay. And your second question is that Pooza doesn't actually affect it only lessen the negative effects. Okay. It won't cancel any effects. But my whole point on the Nadi Dosha is you don't need to put focus on the Nadi Dosha. Nadi, just take it as another parameter out of 20 to 25 parameters. If another uh, 21 parameters are okay, but only four parameters are not okay, then it's not a point to worry about. You can go ahead and you can marry. So Priyarora, if not Gun Milan, then what do you prefer to see? Can you please again tell about Gana Dosha for Vaishyaman? Gana Dosha means basically whether you have born in a Rakshas Gan, Manushya Gan or a Deva Gan. If you are a Deva Gan, you are a very benevolent. If you are a Manushya Gan, okay, you are still attached to the materialistic pleasures. If you are a Rakshas, you are very bad in nature. So for the people who comes from a Vaishya Varn, who are the Vaishya? Vaishya are those people who do the business. Okay. And what is the main purpose of the business? The main purpose of the business is to keep the secrecy of a business. That how we are making this particular product. Have you ever find that anyone is, uh, any shopkeeper telling you, uh, this is my margin, I get 50% on this product. They will always say, nothing is happening in my life. We only get 50 paise, you know, one rupee on this cold ring, nothing. They don't want to tell it anyway. Otherwise, people won't come, no? So for this kind of uh, person, his or her partner of should be like a Manushya or should be of a Devagan. If the Rakshas Gan will be there, her girlfriend will say, okay, you have started this in this business. I will also start in this in this business, even after having one fight. So they have mentioned in this context, but actually it doesn't happen. If you are born in a Rakshas Gan, it doesn't mean that you are a Rakshas by heart. Okay. Because otherwise there will be only three classification in the whole world. Either you are a Deva, either you are a Manishya, or either you are a Rakshas. And I can show you many number of people who are born in a Rakshas Gan, but they are doing very good in their life. They are a very benevolent people. How to judge stronger between Moon Nakshatra or Lagna Nakshatra? You cannot actually judge it. Okay. This is not a work of uh, any normal person. Okay, this can only be done by any learned astrologer only. Okay, okay who, whoever is the most stronger between Jan Nakshatra, na? Anu Jan Nakshatra or Lagna Nakshatra. In matchmaking, Lagna or Moon Nakshatra should be considered. Definitely both should be considered. Both should be considered. But even I have said in the first slide also that even if you will match, do the matchmaking with the Lagna Nakshatra, it is the results are still not consistent. Even if you do the matchmaking by the Moon Nakshatra, still results are not consistent. Okay. So that's why the matchmaking is not a, a very, you know, it's not a very game of a beginners. Okay. It really, really needs a lot of study to do the proper matchmaking. There are many factors. There are a Bhav matchmaking. There are Rashi matchmaking. There are Navamsh matchmaking. There are D30 matchmaking. And after considering all these factors, there are the Khet Samyam and there are Mahindra Deeg, there are Stri Deeg, the Yogini Kut. So there are other parameters which is not, you know, very uh, famous between astrologers because they have not studied why it will get famous. Why will they get aware about it? They have not studied it properly. So if, if you will study it, you will get to know it. These are the parameters and how you can do it.